Yo, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of the SWAS. Continuing on with college football week two, and I got another good one here. Coach Prime, Colorado is on the road against the Huskers. Colorado, Nebraska, let's go. Welcome to the SWAS. The SWAS. Hey, get the SWAS. All right, like I said, Colorado's on the road in Nebraska for this one. Uh, this line opened up at six and a half. It's now seven and a half. But if you look around, you can still find a seven. But for the most part, it looks like everyone's up at seven and a half now. Uh, total sitting at 56 and a half, pretty much consensus across the board. So let's go ahead and get into this one. And as I mentioned, these two teams met last year. Colorado <laughs> beat up on them, 36-14. Jeff Sims, I believe, started the game of quarterback for Nebraska. Obviously, as we know, this is a completely different Nebraska team. But no question, Colorado <laughs> dominated this game start to finish. Uh, now, we all watched last week's game. Colorado got the win over North Dakota State. And before we get into this matchup, I do want to say that this was a good win for Colorado. Look, they're a polarizing team, which means you're going to hear extreme takes on either side. It's going to be people that are acting like this is the greatest win in the history of the <laughs> of the program. And then conversely, you're going to hear people, oh, this against an FCS team, this was terrible, blah, 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 just some hater type stuff. I uh, usually on a polarizing topic such as this, uh, the truth is going to be right down the middle, somewhere in the middle of those two, two extreme takes. And the truth is this is a solid win. Remember, Colorado upgraded a lot of areas. This is still a new unit. Offensive line has never played together before. We expect it to be better this year. But week one, offensive line is an area that takes time. So North Dakota State is not a normal FCS program. They're very good. I mean, they would be top 50 or 60 in the FBS. So this is a very good win. The, the 10 and a half or 10 line was pretty crazy. But that's just a reflection of the market. There's so much hype with this Colorado team. So ignore the 10 point spread. This is a solid win here for Colorado. Now, was it a little concerning that North Dakota State quarterback Cam Miller was looking like an NFL prospect in the game? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, he was 18 of 22, 277 yards, a touchdown, 202.6 uh, passer rating. So he was excellent. Colorado had no answer from him. Also, he was using his legs. 16 carries, 81 yards on the ground and two rushing touchdowns. So yeah, that's a little bit concerning because Cam Miller, I mean, North Dakota State has produced NFL players before. But Cam Miller shouldn't be doing that to your defense. And the reason it's particularly concerning is last year, Nebraska had no offense. I mean, 119 passing yards in the game. Like I said, Jeff Sims was the quarterback at the time. Just 5.4 yards per pass attempt. The run game was there. 222 yards on the ground on 5.4 yards per carry. But it was very one-dimensional. They had no passing attack. Now, they are probably going to. I mean, they have Dylan Raiola at quarterback, five-star recruit, the next Patrick Mahomes, they're saying. I'm not saying that. That's what they're saying. Um, in the opener, 238 yards, two touchdowns, 8.5 yards per pass attempt. So he looked pretty good. Also, Colorado's pass rush was putting pressure on Cam Miller last week. Dylan Raiola was pressured six times in the opener against UTEP. Two for five, 65 yards and a touchdown. He only took one sack. And by the way, I know you're thinking, oh, who cares? It's UTEP. Well, UTEP has one of the stronger pass defenses in Conference USA. They actually had a strong pass rush last year. So this is not a cakewalk um, for your first ever FBS start. Dylan Raiola looked pretty good. Also, the run game looks unstoppable. They had three rushers of 50 plus yards. All three of their RBs got active. The offensive line is... <laughs> It's going to be something serious. Eight of their top 10 offensive linemen from last year are back. They won the game by 33 points. It was the largest margin of victory in a Nebraska opener since 2016. Um, and it makes it even more impressive that they got off to a slow start. They fumbled early, and I think the game was like 7-7 three or four drives in. So they, they got off to a little bit of a slow start. Freshman quarterback, it's understandable. But once they got rolling, they looked unstoppable. And look, Colorado's defense, I mean... I don't even think I need to tell you. You know what it is. This is this is not a unit we trust. This was a bad defense last year. They certainly looked to be struggling against North Dakota State last week. That Nebraska offensive line, those running backs, Dylan Raiola. I mean, Nebraska on paper should be able to average seven yards per carry in this game, honestly. But on the other side, we have Shador Sanders and the Colorado Playmakers. 445 yards in the opener, four touchdowns. 
uh, last year against Nebraska. This was a Big Ten defense last year. Granted, wasn't near the defense they are this year, but still, Nebraska had a solid defense last year. They put up 36 points, 5.9 yards per play, 396 yards through the air, 9 yards per pass attempt. So we can sit here and talk about the big, bad Nebraska defense, but Colorado put up points against them last year. Granted, like I said, Nebraska's defense this year is supposed to be way stronger than last year, and also this game is not in Colorado. It's at Nebraska. I will say, though, even with the current Nebraska defense, which I think is going to be a top 10, top 15 defense in the country. I think they're that good. But even with the current Nebraska defense, I still don't think they have the pieces in the secondary to cover these two guys. Jimmy Horn Jr. and Travis Hunter, I mean, these look to be two of the, the best playmakers in the country on the outside. So even with a top 10, top 15 defense, if you don't have the corners to hang with these guys, you still score points. I'll give you that. But the thing is, when it comes to the Nebraska defensive front seven, I mean, the entire defensive line is back from last year for their top six linebackers. And this was a good defense last year at home. I mean, it's tough to make a case for Colorado's offensive line to win any battles in this one. It should be a real struggle. Pass rush should be all over Shador Sanders. There should be no run game whatsoever. Not that Colorado has any interest in running, but there should be no run game available whatsoever. It's a really bad matchup here as far as the Nebraska defensive front. Um, as far as throwing the ball, UTEP wasn't able to do shit through the air last week. Just 149 yards, a touchdown, and two picks. But we all know UTEP's passing offense is certainly not Colorado. It's not even comparable. So this almost means nothing. There is one thing that concerns me with this Colorado offense, though. We haven't seen this unit last year or this year go on the road and score points against a good defense. Look at last year's schedule. They went on the road and played three good defenses at Oregon, at UCLA, at Utah. Their point totals in that in those games, six, 16, and 17 points. So in their three road games, we've seen this Colorado team play against good defenses. They're averaging 13 points per game. Now, to be fair, Shador Sanders didn't even play in the Utah game, so we can exclude that one. But still, what about at Oregon? What about at UCLA? Remember that Oregon game on the road at Oregon? Score was what, 28 nothing after one quarter? This Nebraska defense is that good. In fact, it might be better than all uh, at Utah's tough, but it, it might be as good as, as these defenses listed here, if not better. So as much firepower as the buffs have at the skill positions offensively, the discrepancy in the trenches is serious in this one. And in my opinion, it's too much to overcome. Uh, so look, I don't, I, I'm not a Colorado hater. You can watch my streams. I, I've spoken positive. I'm a fan. I, I don't hate the, the buffs or anything, but I'm on Nebraska here. I got it early. I'm holding a Nebraska minus six and a half. Now at seven, seven and a half. Now I still think that's the right side. I think Nebraska should do whatever they want offensively. And I actually think Colorado's offense is going to struggle. So I'm on Nebraska in this one. Uh, if you get stuck with a seven and a half, obviously I don't like it as much, but like I said, still think it's the right side. I'm on the Huskers. If you want to see all the bets I currently have open, head over to kylecrums.com and click open bets. You'll see everything I have as well as everyone on the staff here. Uh, also, if you sign up for Sauce Network Plus, it comes with access to the Discord and you can participate in the weekly betting league. $150 and a handicapping trophy go to the winner every single week. You need to have your picks submitted by 6 p.m. Eastern Time Thursday. So by the time you're watching this, the deadline may have passed. So, <laughs> But there's a new league starts every week. So even if you miss week one, you can get in on week two of the league. Let's have ourselves a nice college football weekend. Remember to bet responsibly. Talk to you in the Discord.